and, oh, and wow. you're sitting in a room with eight uh, producers in Hollywood. And so they looked at me and they said, what is the faith-based market? I said, well, do you know all that land in between New York and LA? That's the faith-based market. And, oh, and then, I, then I said, uh, how many of you here have ever heard of A Million Tiny Pieces? The book called A Million Tiny Pieces. And they all raised their hands. I said, well, that book has sold uh, two million copies. And then I said, mm -hmm. how many have heard? There was another book. Da Vinci Code. Da Vinci Code. Mm -hmm. Oh, everybody raised their mm -hmm. hand on that. Then I said, how many have heard of A Purpose Driven Life? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody had heard of it. I said, well, that book has sold 40 million copies, mm -hmm. not 2 million, oh, not 8 million, 40 million. Mm -hmm. All those people in mm -hmm. between New York and L.A., they're reading that book. That's right. That is the faith-based wow. market. That's right. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Welcome, friends. Well, I'm pretty honored to introduce you to my guest today. Many of you have been a fan of their amazing work, and you're about to get a peek behind the scenes. Squire Rushnell is the New York Times best-selling author who coined the term Godwink and has authored a series of 12 Godwink books, six of them co-authored by his beautiful wife, Louise, in over 30 languages and 2 million sold. Squire and Louise are executive producers of the acclaimed Hallmark Godwink movie series, top rated for four seasons, and now their first Dogwink movie for Netflix, Rescued by Ruby, that was just released this month, and it's amazing. Squire Rushnell, a veteran ABC TV executive, led Good Morning America to number one and is a father of ABC Schoolhouse Rock, and Louise is one of the world's top comedic impressionists co-starring for 10 years with Tim Conway and Harvey Korman. She was a Broadway star and ABC family host for eight seasons. So without further ado, I want to welcome you both, my friends, Squire and Louise. Thank you for being here with us today. Oh, hey, great you, to be Brenda. with you today. <laughs> well, it is an honor. And listen, you are no strangers to the Crouch family. You've had many years of uh, doing some wonderful things uh, on the TBN family, and we're just so honored to have you here with us today on Inside Voice. So I want people to know, just tell us about God winks. What, what in the world is a God wink, and does everybody experience those? Well, a God wink is one of those uh, little experiences that we all have. We sometimes thought, gee, I wonder if that's a coincidence, but we knew it really wasn't a coincidence. It had to come from a divine origin. And, and right. later on, when I started uh, writing the first book, When God Winks, um, I, th I thought at the beginning that maybe coincidence and God wink were the same. But if you look up coincidence in the dictionary, it describes two events that come together without apparent cause. Well, a God wink are two events that come together with a cause, and that's yeah. God. And so that little word filled in the, the vacancy in the language, and it just kind of took off, and it's now a part of our everyday language and getting into dictionaries. And, uh, and as you mentioned, the Hallmark movies have been a great help for moving that along and now Netflix. And so it's, uh, we're just on for the ride. We're working for God and this is his word. And wherever we go, we put it at the top of the masthead. Mm -hmm. Well, you're amazing master storytellers and you're right. Everybody says the term God wink now. And I think it's amazing that uh, the way you present a story reaches into households uh, and lives that might not even darken the door of a church. You have such a way of presenting um, really the truth of how God uh, is good and kind, and, and uh, he, he does care about the details of our lives. So, okay, let's, let's transition then. Let's talk about dog winks. Why dog winks? I tell you how it originated because that was all God too. Yes, please. So Squire and I, you know, we talked about this earlier. You know, we we pray together and we're trying to encourage every couple to pray together because it's so powerful. We pray together consistently. 
So in our prayer time, you know, a lot of times you get clarity about things when you pray with your spouse. And so this one particular time, I we finished our prayer time and I said to Squire, I said, Squire, I have this overwhelming feeling that God is telling us to do something with dogs. And he says, dogs. <laughs> I said, wow. yeah, I don't know what it is, but I just think, I just feel like God's saying do something with dogs. That's all I heard. So he said, okay, well, so then he went around during the day and you prayed about it. And then you came back and you said, well, what if we did something called dog winks and we did God wink stories, but dogs were in the center of the story. And I said, oh, well, you know, that sounds good, but ah. where are we going to get the, the dog stories? <laughs> so the next day I'm on my, I have a, a Facebook page called God Winkers and people come on and we share each other's lives basically. And so I opened it up and this woman writes, hey, did you guys see this great story about a, a canine officer <laughs> named Officer Dan and a, this hero dog named Ruby? It's a real God wing. You, you, you should get this. So Squire <laughs> tracked down the officer. And that's how it started. It was the most amazing God wing mm -hmm. story. And then NBC Today show, Squire did it on NBC Today. And then from there, Netflix, we got into the office of Netflix and they loved the story and the rest is history. But it was all from God saying, I want you to do something with dogs. He didn't say anything else. Yeah. That was it, Brenda. That was it. Wow. And you know wow. something, Brenda? We're still looking for that lady who wrote to Louise. I know. We, we God were, wink link. She was a God wink, link. A God wink link. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an unknowing oh, messenger mm -hmm. of a God wink is a God wink link. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Well, no. I have to tell you that I and I don't want to rush ahead too far, but I saw the movie. The, the Dog Wink movie that just released. I actually saw the premiere on Netflix the other night. And I, I I have your Dog Winks book right here. Oh. Uh, it's beautiful. Listen, y'all, we're going to show uh, the artwork to this. But this is a beautiful little book. And it's perfect for sitting on your coffee table, your bedside, full of just the richest, sweetest stories. I love that you did this. And thank you. Of the movie, um, <laughs> I actually invited my neighbor to come over and watch the uh, the Netflix premiere of uh, Rescued by Ruby, the story you were just referring to. Amazing story. I loved every bit of it. There were some very poignant things that you brought out about, you know, how we tend as human beings to um, be marginalized and self sabotage and how, you know, really God wants to rescue us. And he used this dog named Ruby, who was a rescue animal. And I love it. I'm, I'm not going to give any spoilers away because people need to go and watch the movie. It was produced so well. And y'all are just shining stars. I really, really appreciate the work that you're doing. You know, Hollywood can yeah. be dark sometimes. And, and you yes. know, in our, we, we always, and I know you, you and Paul feel the same way that we want to see good family programming. Mm -hmm. There's not enough of it. And, you know, yeah. uh, Squire, I remember one time they asked Squire, who's been in the business for a gazillion years, you know, and they said to him, what is the, we want to know, what is the faith-based market? <laughs> <laughs> and what did you well, say? Well, that was, yeah, it was right after um, Passion of the Christ came out. Mm -hmm. And oh, I wow. was sitting in a room with eight uh, producers in Hollywood. And so they looked at me and they said, what is the faith-based market? I said, well, do you know all that land in between New York and LA? That's the faith-based market. And, oh, and then, I, then I said, uh, how many of you here have ever heard of A Million Tiny Pieces, the book called A Million Tiny Pieces? And at that time, Oprah had done, uh, she had helped build up that book and that was the book that was she helped build up and it had a lot of sales. And then all of a sudden she found out that the that the writer had plagiarized something. So she had the writer back on oh. and she she oh. basically tore him down. But the book sales oh. went up and up and up and up. Wow. So anyway, I was trying to make a point. I said, how many have ever heard of that book? And they all raised their hands. I said, well, that book has sold uh, two million copies. And then I said, mm. How many have heard there was another book? Da Vinci Code. Da Vinci Code. Mm -hmm. Oh, everybody raised their mm -hmm. hand on that. Then I said, how many have heard of a purpose-driven life? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody had heard of it. I said, well, that book has sold 40 million copies. Mm -hmm. Not 2 million, oh, not 8 million, 40 million. Mm -hmm. 
All those people in between New York and LA, they're reading that book. That's right. That is the faith-based wow. market. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amazing. There really is a hunger to, <clears throat> uh, I think that people are, are very intrigued by the issue of faith, uh, the idea of faith, but uh, they're probably more afraid of what they've seen represented by a lot of the faith community about our faith. And so that's what I really love about the work that you do, because, you know, uh, even with my neighbor the other night, it it just opened up a conversation. And, and she was the one that was opening that conversation. And I thought, you know, that's really interesting how um, a story like this can really just disarm yes. and it just puts everybody in a place where <clears throat> it's easy to talk about it because these are experiences and things that we can relate to. And, uh, you know, we're living in a world that is really hurting right now. I mean, you guys see the news and, you know, uh, we've just come through two years of a pandemic and chaos and economically, there's so many questions on the table um, the Ukraine has been invaded by Russia. And what's happening is we're seeing Christians and people of faith who are coming together. We're seeing people being unified in the chaos, in the mess. And, you know, I think we've all t had a tendency to want to run away from our pain and our struggles and, and any kind of suffering. And yet it's stories like these that can inspire us. To not be afraid. I mean, is there something you'd like to say to uh, just to people who are hurting right now? Like, is there is there some encouraging words that each of you might have to just encourage people right now about where we are and and where we're going? Interesting, because when you talked about the the chaos in the world, and and you know when we we were hoping Rescued by Ruby would premiere around the holidays, we thought it was a great holiday movie, and. And Netflix says, no, no, we're going to put it in March. And we thought, March? But see, God <laughs> yeah. knew better because wow. he knew. Uh, we had no idea what was about to happen. But, you know, when, when you look for the God wings in your life and everyone has them, they, they're like a handrail on a shaky staircase. And, and oftentimes we say, well, God, where are you? He's talking to us all the time. He talks to us through the word. He talks to us through people. But he also talks to us through these little experiences that someone else might call coincidence when he's saying basically, hey kid, I'm thinking about you right now. It's like it's like you're at the dining room table with all the the big people and you're the little guy and and you know you see someone across the table give you a little wink. It's grandma, grandpa, someone who loves you. And you know that that meant, hey kid, I'm thinking about you. I love you. Mm -hmm. So when those experiences happen to us, you know, the Bible says in all your ways acknowledge me and I will direct your path. So it really is he's directing us along our path and along our paths. He will give us these little experiences that he's speaking to us all the time. We just, we have to be open to it. I remember William Temple was a great uh, evangelist back, back in what, the back 1600s? Back in England? Yes. I think he was very English, wasn't yes, he? 15, he was very English. 15, <laughs> yeah, whatever it was. And he said, he said, when I pray, coincidences happen. When I don't, wow. they don't. Now, we don't blame him. He didn't know the word <laughs> go, God wink. He would have used it, right. Right. you know. <laughs> It would be used. I'm to sure. When, I'm when sure people pray, the more you pray, the more you see God's hand in your life, the more you feel the direction. And even when we feel so lost and alone, you know, God never, we know that never leaves us or forsakes us. But if we could connect with him daily and just, just, you know, lay, he says, cast all your burdens upon me because I care for you. Just give it to him. Those hands are big. Those hands hold the whole world. He can hold our heart in his hand. And we just have to learn to just say, okay, God, I'm going to focus on you, not on what's going on in the circumstances out there because it's too difficult. I'm going to focus on you. When you focus on him, he puts you on that path like a horse with blinders on. You just look toward the light. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Look towards Jesus. And he's going to keep you on that straight and narrow path. You know, every God wink is a sign of hope. And we all need hope. In this yeah. world, right now, we are so hungry for hope. And, um, and our job is to just help people to see that God is creating hope for each of us every day. It's like he's leaving a gift on your doorstep. Mm -hmm. And our job is to say, open your door, mm -hmm. open the gift, mm -hmm. it's there. 
open your eyes and you'll see your gift. And that's mm. what we, we just encourage people to do at all times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And what a gift that is. You know, we all overcomplicate things and especially when it comes to issues of faith. And uh, there's a tendency to want to re remain divided. But uh, would you say that, you know, in a, in a, a culture of polarizing issues and lots of division over so many uh, platforms and issues right now. Would you say that the, your God winks uh, stories and now the dog wink stories would be um, a bit of a unifier for people? Let me just say that um, one of the best compliments that we've ever had came from, I think a mutual friend of ours, Jim Reeves, a Jim and Marguerite oh. Reeves. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And we were, we were having lunch with them one day out there near uh, the faith uh, community. Pasadena. Pasadena. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. And, we're, and we had lunch with them and we were telling them that we were so excited that our first of four Hallmark movies was going on the air. And, and, and he had been a part of all of our excited thing talking <laughs> in the past and so forth. And so, and, you know, he's kind of like a kid that gets all excited. And, and so he said, you know what I love about you guys is that you're so shallow. He said, no, 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 I, I didn't mean that. No, no. He said, what I mean is, you take him into the shallow end of the pool, and we pastors will take him into the deep end. And we said, yes, that's us. Yeah. We are the shallow end wow. of the pool right. people. The lady who does funny voices mm -hmm. for a living, the guy who brought you Schoolhouse Rock, mm -hmm. we are the shallow mm -hmm. people. And now, uh, we, and, and so we started thinking about how God winks are really our shallow end of the pool mm -hmm. for people to oh. get to know mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. we're in a, a whole new thing. We've gone through the doggy door. Yeah, now we're even more I mean, shallow. We're, we're not even in the shallow <laughs> end of the pool. We're through we're the, the doggy, doggy end yeah, of the, the pool. pool. Yeah. Well, you know, because dogs are unifiers, <clears throat> when you think about it. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't care if you're liberal or you're conservative, what, what color, what religion you are, or you're walking your dog. And yeah. someone else is walking their dog. You have something in common. It's like you, you yeah. love each other's yeah. dog. Yeah. So, so yeah. maybe dogs, and I believe dogs are a God's way of bridging, bridging things. And, you know, when I you think, think so. about God in, puts in um, dogs a lot of the attributes that are so special because they are so much like our Heavenly Father. They're so dedicated to us. They have so courage. Patient. They're so patient. They're mm. unconditional love. They're always waiting for us. It doesn't matter if we leave them for a week and we come back. It's like, hey, where you been? I've been waiting for you. You know, that's the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Lord's always, hey, I'm waiting. You know, I don't care. I'm here. And <laughs> yeah, I just make it. We try to make it, it because we're we're simple people. But also, you know, our whole lives have been working Not simple, shallow, shallow. Uh, maybe one of us is simple too, uh, but a lot of times, you know, because we've worked in the world, which I praise the Lord for, because you kind of know yeah. how the world thinks. And because we've also been in the faith world, we know how the faith world thinks God's saying, here's the bridge. Let's bridge these two together and let's give them a story. Cause he's God says, give testimony to what I've done. That's all we do is we're vessels for someone else to give us their story. And then we blast it, you know, all over mm. the place. <laughs> mm, I love it. And you do it so well. And, and thank God that there's room enough for everybody in the pool, right? Whether oh, it's the yes. shallow Absolutely. end or you the deep end. I mean, <laughs> we're all in the pool. We're all in the pool together. So that's one way to look at it. You know, I think there's not enough credit, though, given to those who have a talent like yourselves to be able to introduce even the thought of that there is a God who cares, that there is a God who is blowing you those kisses from heaven or those God winks that, that you have so, so geniusly uh, coined. And I, I think people need to know that, that uh, he's a God of love and that he's in, it, he wants to encourage us and help us to navigate this often difficult path that we are on and uh, is really a God who unifies. And I think you're right, Louise, you know, when you think about creation and how that God gave, uh, you know, the, the um, dominion over all of the, the birds of the air and the 
fish in the sea and all the creatures, you know, Adam named every creature that was made. And I really think we've kind do you, or I'm going to ask you your opinion. Do you think we've moved away from the idea of stewardship of the earth and of the animals? And is there a disconnect that maybe God's bringing us to a, a wider, broader picture uh, and pers- perspective? Well, you know, I think because we've been so disconnected with people, you know, with COVID and everything, Mm -hmm. it was, that was kind of the beginning and Mm -hmm. we became more and more isolated. And, and one of the things I, we found that during COVID, a lot of people adopted dogs. Yeah. It gave them comfort. It really gave them comfort. And, and we see dogs now, and we always love dogs, but we see them now in a different light as they really are gifts from God in such a special way because, I mean, we have a friend who was so lonely and she got herself a dog and it oh, just made her life so complete. changed her complexion. Right. I mean, her whole countenance is so much brighter. Well, I just saw something yeah. on the news today where they had a um, a dog that was sniffing out bombs in the Ukraine. It's a sweet little dog when he's got yeah. his, his little vest uh, on. Over a hundred bombs he oh, was sneaking, right. he, was, he was sniffing out. Yeah. And it's like, God uses these beautiful creatures. So, you know, I I think he opens up our heart in so many different ways. But my -hmm. concern is that I feel like we've been so divided as a country, Mm -hmm. as a world. And, you know, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. If And and, and I know it sounds, again, so simple, but if we just came back to the author of love, you know, the the true Prince of Peace, Mm -hmm. and just clung to him, he'll make everything work out, but we're so busy trying to trying so hard. We don't like this person. We don't like that person. They have to believe like we just come to the cross. Jesus loves all of us. He died yeah. for every single one of us. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, sister. You can, you can preach that all day long. <laughs> and I love that, that, uh, that's your heart. That's your focus. And you, you know, what lane you're in, so what's new? What's what's on the horizon uh, for for dog winks, for God winks? Tell us what's next. We have to just tell you the outcome of our yes. little our little engine that could, our little pup that could, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, our little mutt that could. Mm-hmm. Ruby, uh, you know, this is a less than ten million dollar movie, which is a very small budget at mm-hmm. Netflix, mm-hmm. and um, right now Ruby is going. Hoof, hoof, Mm-hmm. On the heels of <laughs> another Netflix movie that cost one hundred and seventy five million dollars. Mm-hmm. And but right next to right behind that movie, mm-hmm. Ruby got on to the top ten mm-hmm. into the top five and is right now three or four uh, on uh, in the world uh, in, in the world. And number one for yeah. kids. Wow. Number one for kids. And you were asking what we were doing. Well, kids, you know, Squire being the schoolhouse rock guy and gave you the ABC after school specials and everything. Mm -hmm. He always had a heart for kids, you know, all the years at ABC. And we're we're in the process of doing something for children now that we're so excited about. Mm -hmm. And again, teaching kids, you know, in, in fun ways, just like schoolhouse rock did with music and animation. Well, this is we have the trademark. Sunday School Rock, yeah, and Ooh. Sunday School Rock is uh, is a is a very broad umbrella mm-hmm. under which we will have movies for kids, short form programs mm-hmm. for kids, and it's not just for Sunday school. Mm-hmm. The emphasis on is on sunny on sunny day, mm-hmm. and um, and and it will be targeted much more to the. Um, the expanded homeschooling yes. market, which has quadrupled mm-hmm. over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. We have to Amazing. get parents. We call it a survival kit for kids because, you know, we, I mean, when I was a kid, and I'm a lot older than you are, but when I was a kid, <laughs> I remember we would actually stand up and pledge allegiance to the flag. And then we'd have a moment where our teacher would, would uh, do a verse of the Bible, whether from Psalms or Proverbs, and then we'd have a moment of silence when we pray. And I mean, those days when they took prayer out of school, everything went downhill and poor parents, they don't, they don't know what to do. So we want to give them the tools and to teach kids where it's fun though. You know, we always Mm -hmm. like to do it when it's fun and it's real. Mm. 
Well, the success of everything that that uh, with the Netflix movie and the success of your books, everything, it's just pointing to the need. And, and I really think that you're speaking a language that people are hungry for. So uh, I know it's going to continue to do well. I'm so happy to hear that you've got some materials uh, that you're working on for kids. Now, I'm also kind of curious about uh, how the fact that you work together, you know, my husband and I work together so often, so much of the time. How do you do that? You're, you're two wonderful personalities, but working together, that, that can, I mean, do you just keep it humorous? Give us a little insight there. I am married to a professional comedian. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and she always says, if I don't like that person, she can turn into somebody else. Yes. You know, she's got a hundred different characters. Yeah. Uh -huh. in her. But you know something, Brenda, the, I, I think that the whole key of our joy, which is what it is in this marriage over 20 years, is partnered oh, prayer. Yes, no question. We started to pray together yeah. by accident. Mm -hmm. and we and, was, well, I'm, I'm Mrs. Rushnell the third. So I had, I had to try it three times. I, yeah, I had failed <laughs> twice before in marriage, and Louise yeah, once. Third time was the and, charm. And, and, but, but, but nobody had ever suggested that idea. To, at least not to me. I had never heard somebody say, you know what? It's a great idea if you and your wife pray together. Every day. And mm -hmm. then we put together the, the scaffolding of uh, a, a partner prayer challenge, mm -hmm. praying together five minutes a day for 40 days. Good. Just commit to it. Mm -hmm. It's part of your, it's part of your, your, your uh, non-negotiable mm -hmm. uh, tasks during the day. And it, and it takes as long to pray together for five minutes as it does to drink a cup oh, of coffee. Isn't that wow. like all enough, enough amount of time? But when you do that, when we've mm -hmm. been doing this for years now, and we're working with Baylor University mm -hmm. on the, uh, uh, the the Institute for the Studies of Religion on the first imperial empirical study st empirical mm -hmm. study on what happens mm -hmm. when two people pray together consistently, consistently. and so wow. that that really is a, a a passion of ours, and it all connects to God winks because a God wink is not only the coincidence, not the coincidence, but coming from a divine origin. But it is also another word for answered prayer. Mm -hmm. There's no word in the English yeah. language for answered prayer. And yeah. I never thought of that when that word first came into my mind in that first book. But soon we realized that that was another vacancy in the mm -hmm. language that that word God wink was, was filling. When people would say to us, Hey, I had a God wink. Mm -hmm. I said a prayer. And instead of saying I had my prayer answered, mm -hmm. I had a God wink. Mm -hmm. And so that's yeah. how that word is now filtering into the language. Mm -hmm. So God winks and prayer go together. Go together. Mm -hmm. mm, that's powerful. And, you know, prayer really opens up even communication and, and that place where we can even be disconnected from ourselves. Don't you think? Uh, it, it's a powerful, powerful thing that, so many people think they don't have time for, but I love how you just lifted up that cup of coffee and said in the amount of time, you know, that it takes to have a cup of coffee together, we can pray together. What amazing ministry you guys had. You just moved from the three foot into the pool to maybe the <laughs> five or six end. Uh, uh, that's where I'm going to put uh, you right now. So, <laughs> so I love we're waiting. Because, you know what? <laughs> You are so far from, you're anything but simple, and you are far from shallow, but you have a gift, uh, and it's a gift to communicate um, a very real need and uh, to be able to uh, take the, the, the harder things to digest and to be able to serve them up with a lot of spice a lot of sugar and uh, just the right mix in the, uh, in the ingredients. And, a little bit of fur, yeah. Yeah, a little, <laughs> little fur. <laughs> Well, you know what? I, it, it, I, well, okay, I was going to go somewhere, but uh, when I was a little kid, this is awful. Louise, you're going to laugh at me. When I was a little kid, I had this uh, idea that eating dog food was a good thing. And my mother told me that if I didn't stop doing this, I was going to bark like a dog. And she scared me to death. And I decided it was time that day to stop my habit. <laughs> We'll have to ask Paul oh, about that. Yeah, we'll have to ask, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. I'll let you talk to Paul behind the scenes. But, uh, <laughs> well, 
Now, and I want to know if you'll tell, share with me uh, your beauty secrets because, girl, you just do not age. I mean, it, neither one of you have aged, in my opinion. <laughs> you look amazing as ever. And uh, whatever you're doing, you're doing it's it right. It's being in love. It's being in love yeah. Yeah. and praying. Yeah. And, I, and I don't live chronologically. Yeah. I live, I live <laughs> attitudinally. So I live my Ooh, attitudinal age. True. You know? Yeah. A lot of people yeah. wonder, you know, they'll they'll say, Squire, you're not retired yet. <laughs> That's so like, good. No, 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 you're gonna I don't know how to spell that. No, you don't know how to spell it. No. But you know, God <laughs> could use and, and that was the other thing. I think like with baby boomers and over, sometimes people think, Oh, what is God gonna do with me now? I'm kind of over the hill. God will use you till yeah. the, the, the day you take your last breath. Mm -hmm. If you are willing to let him do that, if you be a willing yeah. vessel, believe me. He'll find something for you to do mm. that will touch other people's lives in profound ways, no matter how old you are. Mm. Such a good word. You guys are awesome. <laughs> now, I want our audience to know how to find you. Uh, you have a website where they can even find those wonderful hats that you're wearing. Tell us yes, where to find they you. Can. <laughs> yeah. Our dog wig. And we have dog, dog wig. Oh, and the muggy held up as a oh, dog yeah. wig. Oh, window okay. shop for the book, or you can buy it there. <laughs> You need a window there shopping. Go. Look Amazon. at the shameless plugging. <laughs> yes, I'm going to wear Godwinks.com. Okay, Godwinks.com. Godwinks.com. All right, we're going to put it on the screen. You guys, thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Uh, love you much. Oh, we appreciate you, all that you're doing. Love you. And you are just awesome. <laughs> Keep going. All, all right. right. You got it. Love Thanks. you, Brenda. And Talk to you soon. All right. You too. And to you, my friend, thank you for spending your time with us. We appreciate you. And I know that you've been encouraged today. And I want you to check out that movie, Rescued by Ruby, and pick up that book, Dog Winks and the God Winks. I know they're going to bless you. And you are going to have some wonderful things to talk about in the days ahead. I'm going to invite you again next time. For now, I'm Brenda Crouch. <laughs>